All right guys, today we're gonna to look at the real number system. Okay, and up to this point, pretty much every number you've ever seen is part of the real number system. And the big idea that you wanna remember here is that the real number system is a large group of numbers that's made up of a bunch of smaller groups or what we call sets, okay? So let's take a look at sets here, all right? So here are some examples of sets that we can look at. Uh, we could look at the teams in Liberty Middle School, the Washington Redskins, the books in your locker, odd numbers or even numbers, multiples of five, whole numbers or integers. Okay. Now for some vocabulary, the thing to remember is that sets are just collections of items. Okay. And those items, they're usually going to call elements. Okay. So when you see the word element, they're just referring to one item or each item in a set. Okay. And then there's another word we'll look more at later called a subset. And a subset is a smaller set that is included in a larger set. Okay? So let's take a look at some quick examples here. All right, so let's start here with something easy, the books in your locker. Okay? So if we were to go to your locker and open it, all right, the locker is a set. It contains elements or items. Okay? And I'm sure if we were to look at, look at the books in your locker, we would probably see an English book. Okay. Um, it's probably also going to be some science book in there. And probably have a library book, so you can have something to read on the line time on Wednesday. Okay. So in this case, we listed three elements or three items in the set of books in your locker. Okay. So that right there is one type of example. Okay. We can look at another example here. We can talk about the teams in Liberty Middle School. All right. So I can visually also represent it like this. All right. Everything in this circle would be in the set of teams in Liberty Middle School. All right. And I'll just abbreviate these. But we could have the Navigators, the All-Stars, the Pride, Patriots, and we've got the Wizards, Comets, okay, and there's other teams in our school, okay, but these are some of the elements that would be included in the set of teams in Liberty Middle School, okay? All right, now let's look at an example that will be a little more complicated, okay? Let's look at the Washington Redskins, okay? Now, there's a lot of players on the Washington Redskins, okay? So this is going to be a pretty large set. So I'm going to draw it big, okay? And we'll just call this the Washington Redskins. All right, so everything we list in this set will be part of the Washington Redskins. Now, rather than going straight and labeling the individual players or elements, I can break this down into some smaller sets, okay? So if I were to say cut the team in half, that would give me offensive players and defensive players, okay? And so this is, these are examples of subsets, okay? And uh, the offensive players are subs is a subset of the Washington Redskins, and the defensive players is a subset of the Washington Redskins, okay? Because all the guys that are on offense on the skins are part of the bigger team. Same thing with the, all the defensive players. Although they're separate from offense, they are all included and all part of the Washington Redskins. Okay? And I can break it down into smaller subsets from there. I can take the offense and I can say, oh, there's a smaller set. There's a set of quarterbacks that we have. There's a set of running backs. There's a set of wide receivers. And those aren't the only subsets. We could have said tight ends, etc., offensive linemen, etc. Okay? And we can do the same thing for defensive players. You know, we'll have cornerbacks, linebackers, and we could have done some other subsets as well. Okay? And then from here, we can actually list the elements in each set. So if I go to quarterbacks, we of course have RG3. Still got Rex Grossman on the team. Okay, so those are two elements in the set of quarterbacks. Uh, running backs, we got Roy Hallou, Evan Royster, Alfred Morris. Okay, wide receivers, 
And then we got Pierre Garçon, Santana Moss, etc. Okay? And then even the defensive players, we can list those subsets by their elements. D'Angelo Hall's a cornerback, and there's some other ones on the team. We'll just keep going through this. Linebackers, we could put Ryan Arakbo, Ryan Kerrigan, etc. Okay? So the way this works is every element is in a subset, and each subset is totally included in the set above it or the larger set. But everything in here is all making up or building up the set of Washington Redskins. Okay? So let's kind of see how that works here with the real number system. Alright, so you'll need your graphic organizer out here to take some notes. Okay? So we're going to go from small to big. Okay? So if you can go to the smallest square in your notes, we're going to put the first set down here. Okay? This set is called the natural number set. Okay? So, and the natural number set will oftentimes be abbreviated with just a capital N. So when you see that, just remember it means natural numbers. Okay? Now because we're talking about sets, Mathematically, when we write a set, we have to put these braces on the front and the back so that everything inside of it is considered that set. Okay, that's important. All right. Now, for the natural number set, the first element in the natural number set is 1. That's where the set starts, and then it counts up 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 because it goes to positive infinity. Okay? The natural number set is oftentimes thought of as the counting numbers, okay? Because when you start counting, you start at 1, okay? And then we're going to go to the next largest rectangle for the next largest set. This set is called the whole numbers, which is represented by a capital W, okay? The whole number set is really similar to natural numbers. The only difference is when we write the set with our brace, the first element now is 0, but then it goes one, two, three, like you're counting, up to positive infinity, close your set with the brace. Okay? So the only difference between these two is the zero. Then we go to the next largest one. This set is called the integers. And this is abbreviated with either a capital J or a capital Z. Both will work. Okay? Now, the integers are made up of the whole numbers which we just talked about and their opposites. So if you look right here, you will see that looks like what we wrote for the whole numbers. But now we have that and their opposites. So with one we got negative one, two we got negative two, three we got negative three, etc. Okay? And basically this set goes infinity both ways. It goes to negative infinity and positive infinity, counting with whole numbers both ways. The next largest set, okay here is where it gets a little tricky. Alright? Now we are at the rational number set, and this is abbreviated by capital Q, not an R, okay? Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction, that's the first thing to remember. But there's also decimals that are rational, okay? But not every decimal is rational. Some decimals will be in this set, some will be in a different set, okay? So the, the difference to remember is, other than fractions, rational numbers are decimals that terminate or repeat. Alright, so the decimals have to do one of those two things for it to be rational. It has to terminate. So for example, if I write 4.5, that decimal stops or terminates. So that means, yes, it is rational. Okay? For a repeating decimal, Let's say I got 1.2222, and they say dot, 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 to indicate that it's going on forever and ever, which you're probably used to seeing written as this. Because that number repeats, has a repeating pattern, it is a rational number. Okay? Some repeating decimals might, you know, have a repeating sequence, not just one number repeating. So let's say I got 2.345. 3, 4, 5, and it goes on forever. We'd write that better like this. And even though it's three numbers, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, because it's repeating those three numbers, that would be rational as well. Okay? So, rational numbers again are fractions or decimals that terminate or repeat. Okay? Now let's look at the different set, which is basically the opposite of rational numbers. Okay, so the set that is opposite of rational numbers is called 
irrational numbers. This is abbreviated by the capital I. Okay, And because it's opposite of rational, it's the opposite definition. So these numbers can't be written as a fraction. Okay, And the decimals that fall into this set, these decimals, they go on forever, but they don't repeat. Okay, So the difference is rationals stop or terminate, or if they go on forever, they have to repeat. These decimals go on forever and ever, but there is no repeating pattern. Okay, so if we had a decimal like 0 0.4581322 dot 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 because it goes on forever, you'll notice there's no repeating sequence. So that makes this irrational. Okay, the most common or the most popular, I should say, I guess, irrational number would be pi. Okay, because when you write that out, you'll know that goes on forever, but there's not a repeating sequence in there. Okay, so that is the difference between a rational and an irrational number. Alright, lastly, all these sets, put them all together, that makes the real number system. So everything on this graphic organizer represents the real number system. And a lot of times people will just say that right, real numbers are rational numbers plus irrational numbers. Because if you look here, those are the two largest subsets. And if you add them all up, they include all these smaller sets and that constitutes the whole real number system. Okay, Let's take a look at some examples and see if we can identify the sets they go into. Okay, The directions here say place the, ration, the real numbers in the most specific area. All right, You'll notice a lot of these numbers will fit in more than one set. So when they say the most specific, think of it as the smallest group it'll fall into. Okay, So let's take here negative 8.2. Okay, if we start from the inside, would negative 8.2 be natural? No, nah, because those are the counting numbers. We start at 1 and go up. That wouldn't work. Whole numbers? No, that starts at 0 and goes up. That wouldn't work. Integers? Negative 8.2 would be an integer. A lot of people might say yes here because you remember that negative, in, um, negative numbers come in the set of integers. And you're right, but these have to be negative whole numbers. So it wouldn't fit here. So negative 8.2 would be rational. Okay, so go ahead and put this somewhere on the uh, rational numbers box where you have space that you didn't write the notes on earlier. Okay, you can do it on the side here like that. Let's go here to number 32. Let's start at the smallest. Would negative 32 be a natural number? Yes. Okay, it is also whole, it is also an integer, it's also rational, but we want the most specific place. So we'll put 32 on natural. Square root of 49. Okay, so the thing you have to remember here, the square root of 49, what does that really mean? The square root of 49 really is 7. So, don't look at it as negative, uh, square root of 49, look at it as 7. And 7 is a natural number. Okay? 0. Let's start at the smallest. Would 0 be natural? No, natural starts at 1. Whole numbers start at 0, so we'll put that in this uh, rectangle for whole numbers. Pi over 9. Okay? This one's going to be tough. Remember we said pi is a rational number because it goes on forever. If Because it's a fraction, fractions mean divide. If you divide pi by 9, because pi never stops, you'll never stop dividing. Okay, Because the number you're dividing into never stops. Therefore, that's going to be irrational. Okay, Alright, here we've got the tricky decimals. Remember, if it's a decimal, right off the bat, it's going to be rational or irrational. Let's figure out where it goes. Look at the decimal. Let's look at it first. Does it stop? Does it terminate or not? And it terminates. So if you remember, terminating decimals go on the rational numbers. Okay. Negative 100. Not natural. We don't have negatives there. It's not whole. We don't have whole numbers there. But it will be an integer. Okay. Because it's a negative whole number. Therefore, that will be an integer. Okay. And now we have here 8 sevenths. Okay. If you punch that in your calculator and you do 8 divided by 7, you are going to get 1.142857, 1, 142857, 1.4, so that 142857, it's like five di uh, digits that repeat. So because it's repeating and going on forever, that makes it rational. Okay, look carefully at those. When they go on forever, the deciding factor is whether it repeats or not. Okay? All right, and so that's our podcast on real numbers. Uh, watch part two for some additional practice.